Welcome to The Real News Network, and welcome to Reality Asserts Itself. I'm Paul Jay. My guest, who just flew in recently from Moscow, was born just one year after the death of Stalin, and he grew up in Moscow. Alexander Buzgalin is a professor of political economy and the director of the Center for Modern Marxist Studies at Moscow State University. He's also editor of the independent democratic left magazine, Alternatives, a coordinator of the Russian social movement, Alternatives, and author of more than 20 books and hundreds of articles translated into English, German, and many other languages. So thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. I'm we, really we, very glad. So growing up at home at a time just after the death of Stalin, and, and we've all seen the West, seen uh, pictures and video or film that would have been of the funeral after Stalin and the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people in the streets uh, mourning his death. Um, we know about the cult of personality and uh, the importance that Stalin's uh, figure played in Soviet life. Uh, what's it like growing up as a child in that, in that kind of atmosphere? Well, first of all, I was a child when Stalin was dead. And uh, my life, uh, my life in school, my life uh, just after school, was interconnected with another atmosphere, atmosphere of spring, of the beginning of spring, so-called Otipil. Uh, you know, sometimes in the winter, when uh, wind from the south is coming, uh, instead of snow, you have uh, a little bit of warm weather. So it was the situation in late 1950s, early 1960s, when I was uh, more or less act um, ready for understanding of the reality, because uh, in the 50s I was nobody. <laughs> uh, what is important, um, my father was an engineer, but military engineer, and my mother was working with him, and it was creation of um, a system of uh, strategic nuclear rockets. Uh, from one point of view, this is dangerous, the most dangerous uh, weapons in, which can exist in the world. From another point of view, now there is opinion that without this um, system of rockets, uh, it could be a real Third World War with terrible destruction of everything. At least in the mentality of uh, all my elder friends, my parents. Uh, Meaning without the nuclear assured, mutually yeah, assured destruction, yeah. there might have been conventional warfare. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And they were working very hard, uh, and money was not motivation for them. They were trying to prevent World War III. And it was main motivation for hundreds of people, and conditions for work were absolutely terrible. And I was living not in Moscow, I was living in small villages uh, not far from the place, from the forest where this construction was under the earth. I don't know how to say it in English, yeah. Uh, atmosphere was very interesting. Uh, atmosphere of friendship, uh, not simple, but comrade relations, uh, officers, engineers, but uh, uh, we had debates about a new novel in uh, journal foreign literature. We had debates about new jazz music. I grew up on great American jazz, uh, <laughs> and it was not really forbidden. Uh, in the same time, it was big debates about politics, and when uh, Khrushchev uh, gave information about victims of Stalin's terror, uh, it was big debates, uh, and interesting time, provocative time, romantic time, if you want. Um, you and I are about the same age, and when I was a teenager, I grew up under the same kind of idea that a nuclear war was possible, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, the, the fear, the atmosphere that nuclear war might be imminent must be even stronger in a country that just lost 30 million people not that long before in, in World War II. Uh, really, it was not fear. It was not fear. It was a feeling that we can prevent this, but we must work hard in order to prevent this. Fear when you don't have forces, don't have uh, opportunities to do something. You are just victim, and victim is waiting. Will, it be, will you be punished? Will you be killed or not? We had another atmosphere. We are creators of our future. And we can and must work hard in order to create future which we like. And it was very rapid changes. Uh, a few years before, a terrible war finished. Uh, one half of the European territory of Russia was completely destroyed, completely, nothing. 
uh, after fascist attacks. Uh, and the, in 20 years, uh, first man in the space, uh, fantastic, result, fantastic results in science, very big and rapid growth of education. And at the same time, uh, difficult life. It was shortage of normal food, good food. It was problem to buy ice cream. In the village, it was impossible. For, I had ice cream maybe two times a year as, uh, as uh, I don't know, gift. <laughs> Uh, for the uh, celebration of uh, one or another holiday. So, uh, it was uh, not so important for us, uh, this atmosphere of uh, good things. Uh, and the situation was also very contradictory. We had the domination of bureaucracy, and I felt this because my parents were under the supervision of stupid generals sometimes, uh, and uh, all this were discussed. And if they're involved in the uh, preparations of the nuclear arsenal, they must have been particularly under observation. Uh, yes, of course, but... Uh, and then uh, we went back to Moscow because my father has uh, had the big problems with health. It was terrible work, really. And uh, when I was 14 years old, even a little earlier, we came back to Moscow. And uh, I was very lucky. We had a very good pioneer organization in our school. It was ordinary school, uh, in the, not in the center of Moscow. Uh, but with a lot of social activity. We, were make, we had self-management in the school, by the way. Uh, school boys and school girls has the right to decide all questions of uh, everyday life of school. To clean everything, it was our obligation. To make repair, it was our obligation. To discuss what to do in free time, how to do, and so on. So it was interesting common work. Uh, we had big activity to put together all our stuff, which is not very necessary, bicycles, uh, toys uh, for Vietnamese kids, to make something, some jobs, uh, to uh, take money to send uh, something which we can buy. Uh, and uh, I was very active in this pioneer organization activity. Uh, but at the same time, we had a lot of conflicts with uh, officials, with bureaucrats who were mainly creating obstacles for our self-organization. So from the very beginning, I was in this contradiction, social activity from below, real enthusiasm, and bureaucratic oppression. Were your parents in the Communist Party? And what were the kind of values, politics of your house, your home, growing up? My mother was not a member of Communist Party. My father was the member of Communist Party, but he became member of Communist Party when he had uh, received top status in Moscow at the end of his uh, working career only. So it was not obligation, really. Uh, atmosphere was, um, I cannot say dissident, but uh, critical about situation in the Soviet Union. And uh, with very honest debates what is going on, is understanding of uh, contradictions, with problems. Uh, I must stress a very important point. Uh, we had, uh, not only in my family, big interest towards classic literature, classic uh, music, uh, classic uh, culture, I can say, and romantic culture. It was normal to read poems, to dream, uh, science fiction, uh, but not American style or modern Russian style science fiction with permanent battles, uh, blah, 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 blah. It was uh, attempts to create the uh, image of the future communist world. And it was beautiful, and we have still very beautiful novels about this future communist world, contradictions in this world, uh, problems of this world. Uh, and this romantic atmosphere was very important for us. Uh, it was commonplace. Everybody was absolutely sure that the beginning of 21st century will be a victory of uh, socialism in the main part of the world. It will be um, a lot of uh, scientific decisions. So robots everywhere in the beginning of 21st century, of course, hand labor in 21st century, impossible. Uh, waitress, impossible. Worker who is doing something on this, in the factory instead of machines, impossible. Uh, automatic cars without drivers, of course. Yeah, airplanes which will cross the planet for 30 minutes, of course. It's absolutely evident. So we were sure that the progress is going on and the future is uh, very interesting, beautiful. But if you want to have this future, you must work hard. 
and you must be enthusiastic. And uh, we had even such expression. Romantic uh, dreams, yes, of course. But what does it mean, romantic dreams? To work 12 hours a day on the basis of enthusiasm. Uh, it was one half of the life, of course. It was another half of the life where people were looking for American-style jeans with uh, Wrangler or Levi Strauss uh, label. Uh, it was a problem to buy, uh, I don't know, good quality uh, sausages, uh, especially if you're not in Moscow. It was so money fetishism, yes, for a big part of population. We had hooligans, we had battles in the streets, uh, pioneer group against hooligans. <laughs> it was also part of our life. Uh, so I don't want to create an uh, ideal model. I want to stress that for minority, but very important minority of Soviet society, this romantic communist style of dreams of uh, self-organization was essential. But at least the perception from outside is that the Soviet state had become a kind of police state, that the ability to talk openly was very restricted. Uh, there were elections, but they're controlled by the Communist Party. Um, if all that's true, then there's a quite a difference between the reality of life and the official narrative. And, and you grow up in that contradiction. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And uh, Really, I felt this contradiction, uh, but not when I was schoolboy, when I became student of Moscow State University. Uh, one of the, another, again, paradoxes. Uh, in the Moscow State University economic department, it was elite, the best university in the country, one of the best in the world. The economic department is also very prestige. Uh, what we had among students, uh, we had maybe 10, 15% of the kids uh, of nomenclatura of uh, top officials and so on, but not more. Uh, we had uh, 30, 40, 50 percent, it depends, uh, of normal, ordinary school boys and school girls who had very good results in education. And we had the uh, former workers who came for preparatory courses. If you had two years work in the factory, in the agrarian enterprise, everywhere, uh, before university, you could for free have uh, one year or two years education to prepare you for the entering university. And if you pass through not very strong exams in this preparatory course, you automatically become student of Moscow State University. When, when you grew up, when you were a child, there must have been a picture of Stalin on the wall. It was uh, too late. Uh, I, I did not born when it was Stalin. Uh, but, had, but 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 the you know what they call the Khrushchev revelations about Stalin to the uh, Soviet people do, does not happen until 1956. So for those first years, until then at least, I'm assuming. You know, I was two years old. What do you want? <laughs> I don't remember. What I remember, what I do remember, it's uh, when uh, we had portraits of Khrushchev. And I remember atmosphere in my family, and everybody said it's stupidity. Yeah, uh, and when uh, Brezhnev came in uh, 1965, and we had three leaders, uh, and uh, no cult of personality in the first 10 years of uh, the Brezhnev epoch, uh, everybody was happy about that. But then we had again cult of personality without personality. Yeah? It's a joke, famous in that time. Uh, about political atmosphere, it's again uh, important to stress that in Stalin period, yes, it was terrible atmosphere of uh, oppression and at the same time of enthusiasm. Very big tension, very strong contradiction. And without understanding of this contradiction, it's impossible to understand uh, epoch of 30s, early 50s in our country. And uh, victory in the war, by the way, also. Uh, later, we had the... Uh, we didn't have uh, total control in the family, in the corridors of university, or even in the ministry of... Uh, my mother was working as trade union leader in the ministry of constructing, uh, I don't know, constructing industry. And uh, in the corridors, everybody was talking openly that Brezhnev is a stupid guy, uh, too old, uh, a lot of funny and even very dirty anecdotes about leaders of Communist Party, nothing. In the official party meeting, yes, uh, some ritual words and then normal debates. 
And again, if you will uh, criticize officials uh, of, uh, in the open meeting, uh, you can be punished. You will lose your job, uh, you will have big problems, uh, not be in the prison, uh, but uh, big problems. Did you discuss these kinds of things with your father and mother? Did they grow up kind of with the belief in the ideals and the hopes of the Soviet Union, and then they go through a disillusionment? Yes, I grew up in the atmosphere of critical communism, if you want. Uh, my parents uh, were, they had the experience of uh, Stalin's terror, not my father mainly, but my mother, his, uh, her father. Uh, it was a problem with repression, uh, not for him, but for his friends and so on. So it was part of our family life, as majority of our families. Uh, it was critique of uh, bureaucratic sit situation in Russia and Soviet Union, of course. And uh, in the same time, it was uh, very strong, not even belief, but knowledge that future belongs to the communism. Why? Because they had practice. They had uh, decades and decades of uh, work together with comrades for creation of new society. So for an American or Western audience, that word communism has less and less now the further we get away from the Cold War. But still, the idea of communism, socialism, but particularly communism, it means police state. It means tyranny. Uh, for an, most American ears, they can't understand how someone would actually hope for communism. <laughs> yes, what, what, did that, right. what did that mean to your yeah, family? For us, it was uh, absolutely another meaning. Uh, uh, because of literature, because of movies, because of uh, some practical communal uh, associated activity. So what was communism for us? First of all, labor is pleasure. I'm glad, I'm happy to have uh, my work. I'm going for the work because I like it, not because I must make as small as possible and to receive as much money as possible. Another motivation, another logic. Second, in the workplace, we have comrades, not competitors. We together will do something interesting. This is communism. Communism is a space where you have beautiful things, useful, beautiful, cheap things around you. Dress, furniture, everything. And uh, these things are just, I don't know, basis for your life, for interesting life, for communications, creativity. That was the image of communism. And uh, if you read books of uh, Strugatsky, Arkady and Boris Strugatsky, Ivan Efremov, two um, uh, very famous writers, yeah, uh, you will find a very beautiful description of such world. And some elements of this world we had sometimes. Like, well, like when we were together as school boys and school girls uh, with songs, we were making something good for Vietnamese kids. We were spending our free time not to play games with computer. It was no computer or football. We were playing football, but not all time. But it was interesting to uh, work and to buy bicycles for Vietnamese kids together. Yeah? Just one example. To help to the elder people uh, together. Uh, to create a museum with memory about victims of the World War II in school from the photos of our parents, of our grandparents, and so on. Uh, one example. Another example in university. We have a union of, uh, young st of students and young scientists, scholars, and we made ourselves with state finance three, four conferences every year for free in different cities of Russia. We were traveling, we were inviting students from other cities, and state paid for their trips, for airplanes, for hotels, for us to go to in other places. And it was self-organization. We organized these conferences by ourselves. We had scientific supervisor, but he or she was controlling the program, nothing else. But th this vision, I mean, communism, the, the, the Marxist vision. Is yeah, it's absolutely a, a Marxist cla vision. A classless society yeah. with very little government, if any. Yeah. Um, as the ideal, but the reality of life was, was, was quite the opposite. Yes, but uh, not 100% opposite. There was free university, healthcare. Yeah, and it was elements of self-organization and enthusiasm. 
uh, in, Khrush uh, in Stalin period, it was big contradiction, both terror and enthusiasm. Khrushchev period, less terror and very interesting romantic enthusiastic uh, trend, not for majority, but for big minority, 20, 30, 50 million people. It was minority, but big minority. Uh, and Brezhnev period, it was a story stagnation. So going down enthusiasm and no repressions, but uh, boring, dusty life. <laughs> okay, in the next segment, because we do this interview in segments, uh, I want to take on a bit of the bigger picture and then come back to your life again. So please join us for the next part of our interview with Alexander Buzgalin on Reality Asserts Itself on the Real News Network.